On Tuesday, President Biden issued an executive order charging the Department of Homeland Security to launch a task force with the aim of reunifying separated families. I'm not making new law. I'm eliminating bad policy. The families, which originally totaled over 5,000, were first separated in 2018 under the Trump administration's zero-tolerance policy, which instructed federal prosecutors, including those in San Diego, to charge the parents with federal crimes, and in doing so, separating them from their children. We're going to work to undo the moral and national shame of the previous administration that literally, not figuratively, ripped children from the arms of their families, their mothers and fathers at the border, and with no plan, none whatsoever, to reunify the children who are still in custody and, uh, and their parents. San Diego federal judge Dana Sabra issued a stop to the program, and the vast majority of families were quickly reunited. Advocacy groups began to work to reunify the remaining families. In between August and December of 2018, uh, Al Otro Lado sent staff and contract attorneys and volunteers to Central America on five separate trips. Um, to Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala to meet with parents in person and prepare petitions for their return. But that work, done without any financial assistance from the government, has been difficult for the advocacy groups. The government did not provide a full list of parents who were separated, and only 36 parents who were deported made it back to the U.S. after strict limitations were placed on who could reunify and who qualified for asylum. Now, several years have passed since the separations, making the job even harder. Creating a task force doesn't mean you're reunifying families. It means you're going to have a lot of meetings about what you're going to do to reunify families. In discussing the executive order, Biden administration officials have said that not all families separated will be able to reunify in the U.S. And whether they can come to the U.S. will be done on a case-by-case -case basis. The government inflicted such an egregious harm on these families that they really owe them um, some kind of status in the United States as independent of asylum. The two other executive orders issued on Tuesday address the root causes of migration from Central America and the treatment of asylum seekers when they arrive at the southwest border. Neither of those take any immediate action. Earlier in the day, a new DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas was confirmed by the Senate. It will be up to him to act on the orders, including dealing with the thousands of asylum seekers who have been stuck in Tijuana for over a year. Max Rivlin-Nadler, KPBS News.